Hi everyone, today I'm here in Hyde Park, New York at the birthplace and final resting place of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. This is the first presidential library and museum and Roosevelt was the first president to be buried at a presidential library. The library opened on June 30th, 1941 and Roosevelt was buried here on April 12th, 1945. Over the years, FDR, as he was nicknamed, has consistently been ranked by historians as one of the top three presidents in American history. The other two are the founding father and first president, George Washington, and Abraham Lincoln. Roosevelt was president during the attack on Pearl Harbor, and serving as president during the time helped to end World War II. Roosevelt also helped end the Great Depression, so it's really no surprise that he was so popular at the time. He's also the only U.S. president to serve more than two terms in office. He was so popular that he was actually elected a fourth time to serve as president, but died at the beginning of his fourth term. Shortly after his death, Congress added a 22nd Amendment to the Constitution to officially limit the presidency to two terms. Roosevelt doesn't have a statue in his library like some of the other presidents, but he does have a second bust facing the bust of Winston Churchill on the other side of the Presidential Library. The two men are forever linked in world history for their collaboration and partnership in helping to defeat Adolf Hitler and to end World War II. The grounds are open from dawn to dusk, so I arrived here very early this morning so I could take my early morning walk around the grounds. I'm happy to see that the very large property and pathways are very well marked. Springwood is the name of the home built by FDR's father, and it's also where he was born. Back in the day, most people were born at home rather than in hospitals like they are today. Roosevelt inherited the home from his parents, and after he and First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt died, they gifted the home and 33-acre estate to the American public to be used as a presidential library and museum. Here's a photo of the extended Roosevelt family standing in front of the house, which is now an historic landmark. Originally, it was a pretty modest home, but over the years, the Roosevelts added onto it to accommodate their growing family. Now, look at this incredible view. This is pretty spectacular, and it's obvious why FDR loved it here so much. I always wondered what this looked like. I've seen various pictures and things, but this isn't what I was picturing. So this was the patio. It's screened in now. I don't know if it was screened in back then or not. Although they do have a lot of bugs back here, so maybe it was. Look at this incredible view. Let's go see what the sign says. Gosh, look at this. Boy, it's gorgeous. As nice as the view is here today, reading this, it says that you used to be able to see, there's uh, the Hudson River runs along, on, I guess on the other side of all of those trees there. Well, because of conservation efforts and planting trees, the trees grew up, which is nice, but they blocked the view of the Hudson River. If you look at the picture of the two of them sitting here, you can actually see the Hudson River and the bridge behind them. <laughs> That's no longer visible. That's too bad. That Hudson River was very beautiful. You'd never know there's a river running behind those trees there. It's still a spectacular view, even without the Hudson River. Before I head back to the car in a little bit of warmth, I mean, seriously, even though it's blue sky and sunny, it is freezing here in the first week of May. I just can't believe it. I'm, you know, my blood is uh, thinned out, I guess, from the desert. Like I say, when I left on this trip a couple of weeks ago, about two and a half weeks ago, it was 90 degrees. And right now it feels like it's around 30 degrees. I think it's probably a little bit warmer than that, but it doesn't feel like it. The caption on this historic photo reads, The World Mourns. It's a picture of FDR's burial ceremony right here on the property. And you can still see the nursery greenhouse or hothouse just to the left of their grave sites that's shown in the picture. And to have the greenhouse right here next to their grave sites, that must have been very important to them. There's a garden on the other side of the hedge there too where they're still growing vegetables. So it seems to be a working property. So the house is here, stables here, coach house, greenhouse, rose garden and flower garden, and their grave sites. 
and the presidential library behind. The picture also shows that nearly a year after he was buried, on March 12, 1946, Winston Churchill visited his gravesite and placed a wreath. Roosevelt was born here on January 30, 1882, and died from a cerebral hemorrhage in Warm Springs, Georgia, at the relatively young age of 63, on April 12, 1945. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt was born in New York City on October 11, 1884 and died in New York City from cardiac arrest on November 7, 1962 at the age of 78. And like her husband, over the years historians have consistently ranked her as one of the greatest and most influential First Ladies in American history. She's always ranked in the top five and is often ranked number one among all the U.S. First Ladies in American history. As you can see, their gravesite here is quite modest, and unfortunately their etched names on their shared headstone is very subtle and difficult to read, especially from a distance. This week I want to give a shout out and a big thank you to my newest channel supporter, Cliff Sheffield. Thank you Cliff for your very kind donation on my channel using YouTube Super Thanks. It's very appreciated. As always, thanks for joining me on this very historic road trip to the past. And until our next trip to the cemetery together, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.